Well, good morning this Monday morning. So very glad you could join us for Kings at Home Daily. As we come into land at the end of our, our, our study through the book of Revelation, we're in chapter 22. I hope it's been doing you good. Uh, certainly last week as we got to, we're coming towards the climax, uh, did me a lot of good. So let's, let's pray and invite the Lord to speak to us this morning. Lord Jesus, we live for you. At the beginning of this new week, we, we come to you to reset our compass, to be clear on uh, the, the purpose of our lives and the week ahead. And we say, Lord Jesus, would you speak to us? Would you be thou our vision, Lord, we pray. So speak now through your living word. Come and help us, Holy Spirit, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, um, those of you who've been with us all the way through the book of Revelation, I salute you. Well done. Not sure where we're going to go next. Might take a few days off at the end of Revelation before we go into our next one. Anyway, here we are. We're in chapter 22. We finished last week at the end of chapter 21. We'd seen the new heaven, the new earth, all things new. Uh, and But the, what captured John's attention was the, just the beauty of the community of God, the, the, the city of God, the people of God, uh, holy city Jerusalem coming down, and uh, just the presence of God there. With Oh, it's beautiful. If you listen, if you missed it, it was beautiful. Uh, some beautiful things there in chapter 21. Um, and it, we ended up with chapter 20, with verse 27 of chapter 21. Nothing impure will ever enter it, the beauty of Eden was lost because sin came in, the, uh, the fall and so on. And what we read here is it's not going to happen again. With God's new creation, all things new, not to be marred by sin that will separate us from, from God. Isn't that lovely? So now we come to, to chapter 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. Now I hope you've got the idea by now that there's so much beautiful symbolism here in in the book of Revelation and of course when we in the Bible when we speak of water it speaks of the refreshing of God. Often it speaks of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, you remember, uh, on the last day of the feast, uh, anyone who is thirsty, come to me. Out of his innermost being will flow forth rivers of living water. So it speaks about just a wonderful, refreshing, or, you know, when it's quite warm, that there's nothing quite as refreshing as, as water. Jumping into a cool lake or something isn't that beautiful right in the middle oh that's just speaking about total fulfillment refreshing the blessing of god in abundance <laughs> and that lovely the river of the of the river it's, it's not it's just it, oh it's just abundant the river of the water of life as clear as crystal, just pure, beautiful, the refreshing of God and of the Lamb flowing down the great city of the city, flowing in the, in the community of the people of God. <laughs> oh my, do you look forward to that? It's just, Eden is being restored here and just the unmarred fellowship with the Lord, not to be spot again. And total refreshing and blessing of the Lord. On each side of the river stood the tree of life. Hey, there we are. We're in Eden. There's Eden. Eden's restored. Paradise that was lost, restored. Tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. Leaves of the trees of the healing of the nations. Now, don't get too... Uh, analytical here you might think oh hang on are there any uh, who needs healing now because uh, well that's the point uh, the, the healing is has happened and it's 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 t total 
uh, refreshing in the presence of God, total healing, all that's so imagery from, from all the way through scripture converging here on all things made new. This is the climax of the story and, and so this one, all this imagery is coming together so don't start to think oh there won't be anyone left who needs healing. Oh no no no, it, we will all have, re have received the healing that we need from the Lord. Isn't that beautiful? And it's, 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 you know, it's every month, fruit all the time, just total fruitfulness. It's, it's beautiful. I've got a couple of fruit trees in the garden. I'm hoping I'm going to get some plums this year. You know, there's some bugs that are after them. Um, oh, the beauty here, the just fruit, 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 fruit. Receiving the fruit of your labours comes to mind, doesn't it? Um, this is beautiful. No longer will there be any curse. There you have it. Eden is not going to get spoiled again. Of course, the other thing about this Eden, it's, it, it's better, it, it is even better than the last one. In the last one, there was Adam and Eve walking w with the Lord in the call of the day. Here, it's become a community, it's a city. And I often said there's like a strap line to the Bible, is that God wants a big family. <laughs> and here we have the big family. And it is beautiful. No more curse. It's not going to be spoiled. Yeah, that's beautiful, isn't it? The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. Oh, now we've got a lovely verse him here. Verse 4. They will see his face. That's what you were made for. That's what the whole of this story is about. It's about you and I, having a face-to-face -face relationship with the one who made us, loved us, redeemed us, and will bring him to himself one day. They will see his face. But, do you remember back in Gen Genesis, that Adam and Eve, they had to hide their faces from the Lord. And uh, even Moses, you know, Mount Sinai and said, oh, no, no, can't, they can't, can't look, you know. But here, we've been made righteous, we've been made new, face to face. Isn't that, isn't that, a love, isn't that lovely? His name will be on their foreheads. His ownership of all that they are, you and me, his name, you know, we, we've got his mark of ownership, we'll have his mark of ownership there in, uh, in the new heaven and the earth. There'll be no more night. Just, you know, the, 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 just when you think, again, imagery, thinking of darkness and fear and, 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 and hidden things and so on. But now we've just got, it's all beauty now, it's all beauty. I mean, don't ask me about the cosmology of this. I don't know, I don't know. But uh, we do need to see the imagery here. And night so often speaks of, 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 of fear and of... Uh, evil things happening, um, hidden things happening, and now just the glory of God filling everything. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign for ever and ever. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? Reigning with Christ, with him. You know, now you might, please, I hope you don't think that sounds boring. Or what are we going to do for eternity? Well, we're talking total fulfilment in the presence of the Lord. And I think I've said on a few occasions, I, I, I want to go traveling. I, I, I want to be, a, I just want to see the beauty of God's creation. I want to take in, the, oh, the wonder of creation. I don't, I don't know what, 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 what uh, as I say, what um, the routines of heaven will be. I don't know, but I do know total fulfillment total joy that's where we began this morning the river of water the river of water of life clear as crystal flowing from the throne trees with fruit every month of the year this total fruitfulness and refreshing and provision and blessing and uh, above all else we will see his face and my time's gone and i hope that's encouraged you today I'm going to pray for us as we go into our day. Lord, oh, this changes us. Lord, as we read these words, having such a hope, 
change us. Well, at least I pray this morning, may it change us. May it affect our priorities and our values that we are living for this wonderful future. This is our hope. And, and Lord, please, I pray, may it touch our lives today and going on from today. May it, it impact our lives, this astonishing future we have, that we'll begin to live increasingly for that day. Go with us today, Lord, I pray, in all the mundane, down-to-earth stuff. Be with us, help us. May we please you in all we do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hope you can join us again tomorrow. We'll go a little bit further. Bye for now.